Scrum project management is growing in popularity. And not only is it growing in popularity, but the tools that we have available to us to make it work in our different organizations is also changing. And so today I'm gonna to show you a bit of an update to an earlier video. So if you haven't watched that, go take a look. I'm gonna be walking you through some new updates and how to better utilize Scrum while using Asana. Welcome to Asana Solutions, YouTube's best place for everything related to Asana, process improvement, and workflow management. I'm your host, Marquis Murray. And so today, like I said, it's a follow-up video to an earlier one. So if you haven't watched that video, go, go watch it right now um, before you proceed with this one. I'll link it in the description below as well. But I'm actually going to be answering some questions from the community, and it is growing. Thank you so much to the subscribers. We are getting there. If you have not subscribed yet, please go hit that button, hit the bell to get notifications, like this video. But I'm getting comments and getting questions on different ways that we can do Scrum within Asana. And this has been a really popular video. So again, if you haven't watched it, go take a look. What I'm gonna be doing today again is taking you through some questions. And the first one is actually coming from Eden13. I hope I got that right. But it says, awesome video. Been trying to wrap my head around how to use Asana for Scrum and Agile. And this really helps. Thank you for your comment. Do you keep your stories in a separate Asana project and move them into a sprint when you start the new sprint? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, and so I'm gonna jump in and kind of show you what that looks like. So in the earlier video, um, I kind of went through how to set up the automations and the rules to get us here, right? To get our backlog set up um, for the sprint, to get our story set up and all of our different uh, sections to kind of work through um, any different project or any different sprint. And so today I'm gonna answer that question for you, Eden, because as we know, sprints, you know, they kind of run in one to two week segments and there are particular outcomes and we're making sure the team's at capacity. Once the sprint is completed, we go through our, wet, our retro and then we go into that next sprint, right? And so there are different stories that we'll need to add and different tasks that will come from the, the main um, product backlog. And so we'll have to coordinate with between the project team and the product owner to make sure that those things are Hi, happening. Hi buddy, how are you? Good. Good, awesome. I'm just doing a video right now. Can I come downstairs when I'm done? Yeah? Okay, I'll see you soon. Kids, gotta love them. Um, so what I've done here on the side is we have our website Scrum Demo, I've just renamed it. Um, the original title was Scrum Demo, you'll see it in the last video. And then I've added another one here, um, calling it Strategy. So what you'll notice here is that in this case, actually I'll leave that alone for now. What you'll notice here is that um, the the two projects we're gonna be running with today are, are related, right? So oftentimes you have this big deliverable, this big project, and you have to break it down into subsets, different sprints. You have different teams that are working together, but you have one product owner or one project manager that's kind of managing all of the bits and pieces. And so one of the ways that we would do this um, to just better answer this question is by breaking it up. And what I'm going to talk about today is really um, a tool that I use all the time called multi-homing. And so if you did have a larger product backlog, right? So on this, we have um, I just have 50 random tasks. Let's assume for a minute that all of these are needed to complete our main project ob objectives, not just the sprint, but get our project across the finish line, get our product shipped, get it into the hands of the users, the client, whoever that may be. Now, what I will, let's just kind of get started here. The first thing you'll really want to do is set due dates, right? Or set durations for everything. And so if we were to come in here, I'm just going to set random date ranges so that we can, you know, kind of get this going. So we're going to start today, February 28th, and we're going to go through until, um, let's just give us uh, that right there. Let's give ourselves about two weeks. So we've, we've set our duration there, right? Um, what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to set the scrum stage Right, I'm gonna set these to backlog because that's where you essentially want them to go, right? Just like so. And then what I'm gonna do now is have these, you know, 10 tasks here. As you can see, they're just named task one, two, six, eight, nine, ten. Doesn't really matter. But for this example, I'm going to take them from this backlog, 
um, the main product backlog and I'm going to multi home them into these different projects here. So then what you would do is in the list view is highlight the ones that you want to add and then we're going to search. So we're going to go website scrum demo and then um, we're going to assign those there. What I'm also going to do Hassan is doing its thing. They're all getting over to the new project. What I'm also going to do is, is going to take the next 10 and I'm going to put them in another project. So I'm going to um, assign another date range here. Maybe these will start um, on the 14th and you know end on the 28th. Again, doesn't really matter. Um, and then I'm going to add these to our other project that we need to complete right to get this project across uh, the finish line. So I'm just going to search for strategy here, right? And so just to answer that question for you, Eden, um, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. This is the best way for you to do it in this case, right? You have the product owner that can manage everything that's happening here. And then the actual um, team that is doing the work can manage it at the specific project level. So as you can see, it's taken all of these tasks from the main spot. They've been multi-homed again. So you can see by going into the task detail that not only do they live in the Scrum product backlog where they first originated, but now they're living in this section. And no matter what happens, if I move this to a different section, it all gets updated. Or right? if I move task one to to do, Asana is gonna run this little automation, it's gonna update the Scrum stage, and then so on and so on. What you wanna make sure you do when you get here is you wanna assign it to a, a story number in this case. And so let's just say, that's story one. And then you just want to do that for all the other relevant tags. Um, again, just to make sure that everyone is staying organized. So again, if you haven't watched that first video on why this is so important, go back and watch it. But that's one of the ways. So after you get through this entire list, right, let's just say we completed all of these, we're done. Um, they're going to stay in this project and they're going to move to the next section. So, um, they would go to our complete section here. So let me just move those over. Seems my automation is broken. Or maybe I just didn't complete it in this case, but there we go, right? So you would keep them in there. And that actually brings it to our, our second question um, around Scrum. Again, this is a super popular video. Thank you so much for your comments. But the next question was you know, from Amy Jo Yates, where it says, thanks for the video. We use Asana for Scrum. Question, um, what do you do after the sprint ends? Do you remove tasks? Um, that are in the complete column. My short answer is just no. As it relates to the project, we want to see you know where we've come and you know how we're doing, and we want to be able to track our progress. So I would say, um, once you've created the automation to get everything over to complete, I would say leave it as is, right? So we can see it there. If you don't want to see it, we can obviously change you know the filtering to. Um, just the incomplete tasks, and then it removes it as well. But I, as a project manager, as a um, product owner, you'll more than likely want to see what's been done so we know how we're tracking. So that's how I will uh, leave that one there. The last question that I had uh, in relation to this video, and I hope there'll be more after this, so please leave a comment if there's something that's coming up. I'd love to know how you're doing this in Asana. Um, but you know, Michael had said, I watched several videos about Asana and Scrum, but this was the first that helped me to understand and implement Asana to my needs in less than 15 minutes. Thanks so much, Michael. Again, watch the video. Um, but Crispin had a follow up uh, question. And so he said, yes, this is the best video explaining how to implement Scrum and Asana. It would be even greater if you could conclude, include, sorry, follow-ups on how you would map and configure epics, stories, and tasks in the features in Asana, as well as the possibility of visualizing the burn down graph um, for, um, for every sprint in Asana. So yeah, um, I've, I've just answered some of that, hopefully in the first, you know, kind of section of this, how we multi-home, how we can have epics tied to the actual stories, right? So just to kind of recap, we have our larger product backlog here with all the tasks and, you know, it updates on this. So the product owner can see at a glance what's happening on this side of things without really ever having to get down into the individual projects.
Um, and then we have our scrum demo. So I'm showing you how to work through that. But this next section is really going to bring it home, I think. So I'm going to show you how to use portfolios to keep this all on track. And portfolios are one of those one of those things that if you are busy, um, if you do have a lot on your plate, if you have a lot that you are responsible for, it's a really great way to get a 30,000 foot view into the work that's happening without having to drill down into the specific task level. So if we do go to portfolios up here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create one and we're going to call it Scrum Portfolio. Super simple. We're going to create it. And then once that comes up, uh, there it is. We're going to open it up. And so we're going to start by navigating, you know, to the add work button. And I'm going to make sure that we have these in here. Um, as far as a burn down chart, um, Crispin, we wouldn't be able to do that um, per se, but I'm going to show you what you can do to get an idea of where all your projects are and um, how they're related to the overall goal. So we're just going to start by searching. I know it's right there, but good practice just to search it up. And then I'm going to add the second um, one as well, which was strategy. There we go. So now we have um, the two projects that are related to our final delivery. We can see here, you know, what the task progress is. If we were tracking um, by milestone, we're not in this case. Um, I'll show you what that looks like in a second, but um, we could check by milestone or by task. So you can have all your tasks in this list. Um, we can see the priority of these as well. And what I really love about this view is not only can you see um, the timeline for everything when it comes up, um, but you can see um, different fields. So if you wanted to, we could um, put in um, the project status here. We could put in points. We could put in, um, do I have estimated hours in here? Yeah, we could put in estimated hours because this phase of the project is probably going to take us like uh, 24 hours. This website, this is going to take us 96 hours, right? So we can get stuff like this in this level. So again, it makes it really simple. And then the um, product owner does not have to really drill down. They can see what's going on here. They can get status updates. They can choose to sort it by owner, by date, by priority, and by the estimated hours as well, or by the status of that project. Um, we, get, we can see the timeline and the workload here. If we had stuff assigned, we don't right now. Um, but if I were to put this in here, right, um, we can better assign those things. Let me just uh, make an assignee and a due date within this time. There we go. And there we are. Now it's assigned. And we can see exactly um, the effort, which in this case is one, um, and how it relates to that task. The last thing I'll show you before we leave here um, that I forgot to do off the top is what do you do with your stories? Because as the project gets more complicated, we would assume that everyone would know that, you know, th these are all high level objectives for the sprint. We don't touch these, but that's not always the case. And so what I like to do is just kind of put a do not move, um, leave that for the product owner or the project manager. And then um, in our list view, just because it's easier to select all. I would make these all milestones um, right there. And then we already have the story number. Um, I'm such a stickler for organization and like I, I often overcomplicate things, but from a visual perspective, if you are planning, right, it's, it's best practice to just like take the time and do it right in the very beginning, right? So in this case, we have um, this story one here. So if I did go into website wireframes um, as our first story objective here, what I would wanna do is just add a dependency, right? So this dependency in this case, I'm gonna search for web one. Um, there we go, we are in here and there we go. So now um, we can actually complete right, this milestone until um, this is done here. And so that is obviously pulling the wrong one. There we go. Let me see if I can do it another way. It's loading up our timeline and we're gonna go to unscheduled. So what I'm actually gonna do is pull this in here. So we have our stories. I'm gonna drill this down. Uh, I'm going to put in, what did I say it was? Website wireframes. So I'm going to go back to timeline, go to unscheduled website wireframes, and I'm going to pull it in here to um, our story. So do not move, right? 
And then under web one in our backlog, I'm gonna put this under to do right there. And we can see the dependency right there. We can see that it's connected to that one right there, um, which is really nice. And you can kind of draw those in as you see fit. If I did want to add another dependency, I can put it there and then I'll just be drawing it back to the main milestone. So again, visually, it's just a really nice way to keep everything super organized. Um, we can obviously change um, the duration of our um, of our task by just clicking and dragging. But now you can see that you know this you know completion we can't actually complete it we can't mark it complete right it's going to give us that warning that we have to go back complete web one and web two before we can finish that so again that's just another tidbit something that you can do um, just to keep things super organized and keep everyone on track so i hope you like this video i hope you got something out of it if you can think of a better way or if there is a better way that you found to do what i'm displaying here i'd love to see it i'd love to talk through it some more because what I love about Asana is its flexibility. We can do so much with it. And so I'd love to see what you're doing. Leave a comment if you got something from this. If I missed something, I'm sure you'll tell me anyways, but leave me a comment. I'd love to converse on what that looks like. And again, if you found this helpful, if you feel that this video would benefit someone, a friend, a colleague, a family member, please share it with them so that we can reach more watchers and viewers just like you. Thank you so much and we'll connect with you next time.